I just watched an interesting documentary about the woman who sued because of the coffee she spilled in her lap. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Yes, thanks for joining us today. It's a mythical morning no matter what time of day it is. Now, uh, in the very recent past, when I was deciding to gain entertainment from the Netflix, I was perusing and landed in the documentary section. Happens all the time. Um, and now, I, I'm more of a television on Netflix kind of a guy, but there's yep. just certain times when I have, I'm just in the mood for a documentary. To learn. Well, I still wanna be entertained by a documentary. And learn. But I actually learned something inadvertently I, because this documentary I watched took a turn. I only learn inadvertently. That's, you need a t-shirt that says, I never and learn I'm, purpose on and purpose. I, and I'm proud of that. Kids don't learn on purpose. So um, this movie's been out for a few years. It originally came out on HBO, I think, but uh, it's, it's, it's a recent addition to Netflix, which means it's new to me. Right, new to you, man. Uh, called Hot Coffee. Hand me can, down. You can read like a couple of lines of the description, and it said that it explored the lawsuit of the woman who sued McDonald's for the coffee that she spilled in her lap. I recall this. So I was like, hmm, I'm interested in hearing kind of the backstory on this. It seems like it would be something fascinating. Now, I will say the documentary turned into something that was very, it was a very political documentary. I can get into that a little bit, but um, my preconceived notion of the documentary was based on my preconceived notion of the, of the, of the trial itself. Oh, this frivolous lawsuit or this woman, she, of course the coffee's hot. It's coffee. Uh, $2.6 million in punitive damages awarded to this woman? Really? Yeah. Whoa. It's like, what in the world? Give me some coffee. I'll pull up, pour, I'll take a bath in hot coffee for $2.6 million. Well, no, you won't. And here's why. You, you should watch the documentary. It's called Hot Coffee. Listen. Hot, hot, hot coffee. coffee. Um, the woman has since passed away, but her. Because of the coffee? No. No, well, that, I wouldn't swim in that coffee, buddy. Well, I mean, I think... Not her, to make light of it. She was an older woman, and I think that her, her injury sustained by the hot coffee... She went through the drive-thru with her nephew. Her nephew hands her the coffee. They're parked. They're not driving. She hands her the coffee. She puts it in between her Should have sued legs. the nephew. She's putting, she's, putting the she's putting the cream in there, and then uh, she spills the coffee. And in this documentary, they show um, photos of her injuries. Ooh. The lap area? Yes, and I'm, I'm glad they did because that's the only way to show that this was, this, these injuries were horrendous. Third degree burns. I just thought it was like got a little red. Were yeah, you saying it was third degree burns? Skin grafts, yeah, I mean, but months, here's the deal. months of fixing this. You have to be prepared, you know this. Once you go in down, you go down the Netflix documentary rabbit hole. You have to be prepared to have your entire world change because that's the point of these documentaries. It's like we, a couple of years ago, we watched the um, tap, tap the one yep. about bottled water, and it's like every time I have a bottled water in my hand now, I feel like evil. Yeah, you and know? and I just wanted to sit down and watch something. That's like, oh, this is an interesting. Um, uh, profile piece on the woman and what she went through in the trial and stuff like that. Well, that's not what happened at all. They ended up talking about two or three other stories and, and it became a very political documentary about tort reform, which basically is, um, well, the documentary's perspective is it's large corporations' efforts to influence legislation against an individual's rights to sue companies. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it gets into all these things which are very compelling that by the end of this, I'm not gonna get into it now, you can watch the documentary, but by the end of it, I was just fired angry. Up. Fired up. And that's, you know, I, I, just wanted, I just wanted to have like some light entertainment. Wanted to kind pour of see, some coffee on oh, somebody. How did this woman get, what happened to her life? But you know, that's what happens that's in these documentaries. That's how they get you, man. Uh, and I they get, yeah, they call it hot coffee. They don't call it tort reform. Right. I mean, that doesn't make a good documentary. Or tort deform. Or yeah, so, you know, yeah. you could get a little cute with it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, they had they hooked me with the hot coffee, and then the, went through all these heart wrenching stories of people who uh, their lives were screwed over by corporations, but then they were handicapped in their way that they could gain justice. But okay. I haven't seen the documentary. So first of all, I will say that I know when I watch the documentary, I'm gonna completely agree with you. But I'm pre-doc right now. 
So when you're a pre-doc, you can have your own opinions. And then when you watch the Netflix documentary, you, then yeah. all of a sudden you have to have the same opinions as so, the documentary. Yeah, so now is your cue to spout your ignorant opinion. So I think, first of all, now that I know that this is an old lady and she got burned real bad, it makes me feel kind of sad but, for her. But, but the, tort reform, they they used the McDonald's uh, hot coffee situation as kind of the, the poster child for frivolous lawsuits to pass the legislation. Right, because... Now, I'm not saying that that one in particular is frivolous. I haven't seen the documentary. But there are frivolous lawsuits. There was a guy in 2005 who, his, he, the, the dry cleaners lost his pants. They lost his pants. Okay. He sued for $67 million. This is another famous case. When you like Wikipedia frivolous lawsuits, this is one of the ones that comes up. This guy was a judge, and he has some like khaki pants that are nothing special. It's like a pair of Dockers, and totally making this part out. No, no, I mean they're it, no, they weren't like. Hey, it's just like she had the coffee in her lap. I mean, she had to know no, it no, was no, no, hot. No. There, no, there was nothing special about the pants. They weren't like an heirloom. They weren't like Civil War pants or something like that that would be worth something. You know, it was just pants, and they lost him. He sued for sixty-seven million dollars. Now. Of course he did not win. But do you think, this See, is my question, no, my question for you and for me is do you think that we could watch a documentary? Like if there's a filmmaker out there who's like, I'm gonna make a documentary and make people think that this pants guy was right. And it right. could be called Sue Your Pants Off. <laughs> yeah, right, Sue Your Pants Off. Hey, hold on. We should make it. We should make it. We should double fist bump right now and make it. And then we're gonna convince the world that this guy was right. Do, but do you, do you think- Yes, I do believe that because even in that, Ronald Reagan, when he was president, they show a press clipping of him talking about frivolous lawsuits in his Ronald Reagan way, and he says, there was a man who went into a toll booth, and then a car ran into the toll booth and damaged his legs. Now, who do you think he sued? Would you be surprised to know that he sued the telephone company? You mean a telephone booth? What did I say? Toll booth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, telephone booth, that's what I meant to say. Or it's, yeah, I, would you be surprised that, did, how much of that did I get wrong? I don't know if we should make this film together. He was in a telephone booth I and then he, make it on my own. He, saw, he sued the telephone company. This is Reagan talking. And then, it come, come to find out, he sued them because that telephone booth had been hit multiple times by cars and they had not repaired it and he could not get out of the telephone booth as the car was coming. And then Reagan had egg on his face because he was making fun of the guy who was Handicapped because he couldn't get out of the telephone booth. Oh, look at that idiot suing the suing the telephone company. Well, again, but see, but they he got was hit out by of the know. I mean, he didn't. He didn't watch the documentary. The Reagan should have watched guy, the documentary. The pants guy doesn't have a leg to stand on. He doesn't have a pants leg to stand on. I don't. You think, don't know that. But we got to get to the bottom of it, and we got to make everyone think that he's totally got a legit case. I'm just saying, if something seems ridiculous, you need to hold your horses. Hmm, okay. All right. And wait for the information to come to light. We could call it. Wait for the Netflix documentary. Hold on, we could do, call it Hold Your Horses. That's what I've learned from this documentary. You need to hold your horses. You need to suspend judgment based on your limited information. Suspenders. Especially if hold they- Hold the pants up. Especially if they win the case. I mean, the, the, one, the hot coffee woman won the case. That should tell you something. This is a jury of peers here, people. The pants didn't. The pants guy didn't know. But let's get to working on that. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Liz from Longwood University in good old Farmville, Virginia, and it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. I really think we could be on to something here. There's a, and no one else is gonna make that documentary. It's a challenge, you know? We should look the guy up. Yeah, he doesn't have any scars or anything. Though. Link draws a portrait of Rhett. Here we are, all right, so I, I got the, I got the world's best pencil and the paper ready in case this one came up. Oh. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. I feel, I feel the need to... Uh... Boom. Do I look like a caveman? Here, here, do, do me on the other side here. A little five o'clock shadow on there. See, he, here's here's what you've done. Mm, yeah, he's thinking about something. Look at it. 